let's discuss non communicable diseases if the evolution burden of non communicable diseases is increasing in developing and developed world we will discuss this session according to following learning objective we will discuss the epidemiology of non communicable diseases then epidemiology of cardiovascular diseases congenital heart disease rheumatic heart disease then we will discuss epidemiology and management of hypertension epidemiology and management of obesity burden of cancer is also increasing so we will discuss epidemiology of cancers we will also discuss epidemiology of diabetes and prevention of diabetes we will discuss the epidemiology of accidents number of accidents is increasing due to increase use of vehicles then we will discuss the epidemiology of blindness let's start what are non communicable diseases they are also known as chronic diseases why chronic diseases because their duration is longer and they result as a combination of genetic physiological environmental and behavioral factors what are genetic factors genetic factors cause diseases they may be chromosomal physiological accidents trauma environmental environment affects health our external environment our internal environment it affects the state of health there may be external factors there may be internal factor they are physical chemical and behavior our behavior affects our disease like lifestyle there is modification in lifestyle the main types are heart disease respiratory disease cancer diabetes asthma how to define chronic diseases the commission on chronic illness in usa has defined chronic disease as comprising of all impairments a deviation from normal they cause deviation from normal functions which have one or more of the following characteristics like they are permanent like hypertension is permanent cardiac disease is permanent they leave residual disability like stroke can leave disability they are non reversible cancers they may be non reversible they require special training of patient for rehabilitation cause patient has to take has to take medicine for long term they may be expected to require long period of supervision hospitalization is required medication is required admission is required treatment is required they need observation cancer patients diabetic patients hypertensive patients they need regular monitoring and observational observation and regular checkup there are gaps in natural history absence of known agent in most of circumstances agent is not known what is causative agent it is not known most of the chronic diseases are multifactorial like hypertension stress can cause hypertension smoking can cause hypertension alcohol can cause hypertension age family history stress obesity so they are multiple factors and latent period is longer it takes time to develop disease so it's hard to identify chronic disease what are cardiovascular diseases diseases of coronary arteries are cardiovascular diseases there is occlusion in blood flow like impairment in function of heart due to occlusion in coronary circulation heart doesn't function normally so there is disease there may be chest pain there may be a heart attack it is due to atherosclerosis thickening of lumen of arteries what are predisposing factors there are two types of risk factors non modifiable and modifiable non modifiable risk factor these are the risk factor which can't be changed like age you can't change the age incidence incidence of disease increases with increasing age gender more predominant in males family history family history can't be changed there are genetic predispositions are genetic factors these are non modifiable risk factors but there are certain modifiable risk factors which can be changed which can be modified like smoking one can stop smoking alcohol excessive use of alcohol causes heart disease patients can stop alcohol obesity weight can be controlled 
physical activity these diseases arise due to lack of physical activity so patients are encouraged to perform physical activity hypertension blood pressure can be controlled diabetes sugar levels can be controlled serum cholesterol cholesterol can be treated it can be managed so incidence reduces if we control cholesterol diabetes and hypertension how we can prevent cardiovascular diseases or coronary artery diseases we can do primordial prevention primary prevention and secondary prevention what is primordial prevention we must encourage individuals to adopt healthy life healthy lifestyle healthy lifestyle is mandatory balanced diet physical activity we need to educate them so health education plays an important role development of risk factor should be stopped like obesity is a risk factor smoking is a risk factor alcohol is a risk factor so we must teach individuals our masses to avoid these things so risk factor will not develop so we can stop the disease process then we can do primary prevention we can risk is present but we can stop the interaction of agent host and environment two strategies are adopted there is population strategy and there is high risk strategy what is population strategy masses are educated this is mass strategy whether risk factor is present or not whether they are high risk or not they are educated they are trained they are trained regarding lifestyle they are trained about smoking cessation they are trained regarding balanced diet but it's difficult to target masses it's difficult to target whole community so best strategy is high risk strategy we need to identify those who are at high risk who are at high risk smokers alcoholists obese those who have high cholesterol level those who are hypertensive those who are diabetic we have to target them we have to educate them we have to modify their lifestyle we have to modify their eating habits that's how we can control the burden of coronary artery disease or cardiac disease cause mortality is increasing morbidity is increasing disability is increasing there is burden on health health systems so we can stop this by adopting primordial prevention primary prevention then secondary prevention what is secondary prevention we must diagnose there is early diagnosis early diagnosis by screening screening of high risk individuals early diagnosis by ecg chest x ray echocardiography these are the tests that can be performed on high risk individuals they are diagnosed and then they are treated early diagnosis and prompt treatment early diagnosis is beneficial only if we treat as early as possible we need to treat cardiac diseases we need to treat root cause then we will discuss congenital heart disease what are congenital heart disease there is defect in structure and function of heart they they are developed during fetal growth present at birth but they are detected and later stage the prevalence of congenital heart disease is 5 to 9 in 1000 children below 10 years of age this is a problem with developing world cause there is lack of screening there is lack of health services so these diseases are increasing burden is increasing and they are contributing to our disability what are clinical features apnea there is difficulty in breathing respiratory infections child gets respiratory infection often there are murmurs there is growth retardation these are the major clinical features what are the causes family history age at marriage or age during pregnancy mother who are a 35 years or above they have chances their children have chances to develop congenital diseases viral infections like rubella x-ray so that's why x-rays should be avoided in pregnancy mothers who are smokers mothers who are alcoholists their children develop congenital heart disease so we need to treat these root causes how we can prevent them there is primary prevention 
हेल्थ एजुकेशन वी नीड टू एजुकेट मदर अवॉइड स्मोकिंग ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी दे मस्ट अवॉइड स्मोकिंग दे मस्ट अवॉइड अल्कोहल देर शुड बी रेगुलर चेकअप रेगुलर चेकअप एंटीनेटल विजिट विजिट टू एंटीनेटल क्लिनिक्स दे शुड बी अल्ट्रासाउंड एंड जेनेटिक काउंसलिंग वट इज जेनेटिक काउंसलिंग incidence of these diseases is higher due to family history cousin marriages play an important role as in developing world in southeast asia especially in pakistan there is a tendency of cousin marriages we need to discourage cousin marriages we need to educate the families regarding cousin marriages if any congenital disease is present now we'll discuss rheumatic heart disease what is rheumatic heart disease it's a sequence of rheumatic fever due to streptococcus pharyngitis infection rheumatic fever is acute febrile illness fever proceeds towards rheumatic heart disease heart valves are involved beta hemolytic streptococci are causative agents and reservoir of infection is human being but cases and carriers play a role to spread the disease age is very important age incidence is from 5 to 15 year child from 5 to 15 years get this infection incidence is equal in both male and female it can cause immunological process and repeated exposure participate illness and there are social factors poverty majority of people in our country are poor there is poor housing they are malnourished there is illiteracy people ignore normal fever or throat infection there are larger families there is overcrowding there is poor standard of living these are the social factors cough nodule is pathognomonic sign of diagnosis of rheumatic fever it involves mitral valves it can cause mitral stenosis what are clinical features there may be low grade fever lasting for 3 months so there is long history of fever it involves joints it involves large joints knees ankles it can involve elbows wrist it can cause carditis it can cause tachycardia cardiomegaly pericarditis there may be heart failure murmurs may also be present and there may be av block first degree atrioventricular block there may be nodules presence of round firm and painless nodules below the skin these are the nodules they are present in rheumatic heart disease chorea there are abnormal jerky movements there is erythema marginatum these are pink colored skin rashes they appear on trunk and extremities so what are major manifestation and minor manifestation major manifestation of rheumatic heart disease are carditis it involve hearts or tachycardia it may lead to heart failure polyarthritis joint pain chorea jerky movement erythema nodosum and marginatum these are the major clinical manifestations of rheumatic heart disease there are minor manifestations also like fever polyarthralgia there may be past history esr may be raised there may be leukocytosis and c reactive protein will be raised in rheumatic heart disease we need to prevent rheumatic heart disease we can do primary prevention secondary prevention and tertiary prevention what is primary prevention we need to stop underlying cause we need to treat throat infections as early as possible we need to improve hygiene sanitation should be improved living standard should be increased overcrowding should be avoided we should avoid overcrowding it can be done through health education we need to educate the society basically we need to raise their life standards we need to improve hygiene sanitation that's how we can do primary prevention in rheumatic heart disease what is secondary prevention we need to diagnose we need to diagnose as early as possible we can do this by screening screening in high risk groups screening in poor low socio economic status groups we know about the family history so we need to screen those who have positive family history this can be diagnosed by throat culture we need to identify streptococcus then we need to treat what is treatment benzyl penicillin is drug of choice plus we can give aspirin 
to reduce pain and fever. So there are two main drugs, benzyl, benzylene and aspirin. What is tertiary prevention? We need to limit disability. Because it's a long-standing disease, it can cause disability. And we need to rehabilitation. Rehabilitation is required to control rheumatic heart disease. So rheumatic heart disease should be screened, should be diagnosed as early as possible to avoid crippling, to avoid disability, to reduce mortality, to reduce morbidity of the disease. So there is criteria, there is major clinical criteria and minor clinical criteria. We must know that there is erythema, there is arthritis, there are nodules, there is carditis, there is scoria. If a child has these symptoms, he or she must visit hospitals, parents must take this child to hospital and we should identify, we should diagnose. Hypertension is an emerging problem nowadays. Majority of people have BP, in, rise in BP. Normal blood pressure ranges from 120 millimeter of mercury and diastolic is 80 millimeter of mercury. But if blood pressure, blood pressure rises from 120 and diastolic blood pressure rises from 80, in two successive readings or two successive visits after screening, person may be hypertensive. And other problem with hypertension is that there is primary hypertension. There is no known cause of increased blood pressure. It tends to develop gradually with age, with years. And people don't know that, that their blood pressure is increasing because there are no symptoms. And suddenly they present to hospital with complication, with stroke, with heart failure, with heart attack. So we need to identify, we need to diagnose primary hypertension. It can be done by screening. Then there is secondary hypertension in 10 to 20% of cases. There is sleep apnea, kidney problems, adrenal gland tumors, thyroid problems, they can raise blood pressure. Certain medications like uh, birth control pills, they can increase blood pressure. Certain drugs, amphetamine, cocaine, they can raise blood pressure. Alcohol abuse can increase blood pressure. What are the major symptoms? In 80 to 90 percent cases, it is asymptomatic. There are no symptoms. There may be dizziness. There is flushing of face. Headache can be a symptom. Fatigue can be a symptom. Epistaxis and nervousness in high blood pressure. If blood pressure rises from 160, systolic blood pressure rises from 160, and diastolic blood pressure rises from 100. There may be epistaxis. There may be bleeding from nose. And there are severe cardiovascular, neurological, renal, and retinal symptoms in malignant hypertension. What are risk factors of developing hypertension? Stress. There is stressful lifestyle nowadays. Stress, stress is contributing in high blood pressure. It is increasing the burden of hypertension. And smoking. Smoking is also a risk factor. Use of alcohol. This is also a risk factor. Obesity, overweight people, lifestyle, there is sedentary lifestyle, no physical activity, can rise the blood pressure, maybe family history. Age is also a contributing factor of blood pressure. Cholesterol can also rise the blood pressure. So we need to monitor this. We need to control these risk factors. We can prevent hypertension. It's a preventable disease. It's a treatable disease. We can do primary prevention, we can do secondary prevention, we can do tertiary prevention. What is primary prevention? There is lifestyle modification. Lifestyle should be modified. People should be encouraged to adopt healthy lifestyle measures. They should walk, they should sleep normally. There are dietary modifications. Balanced diet is important. Reduce salt intake. Management of stress can also play an, play an important role in reducing hypertension. Basically, if we control risk factors, we can control hypertension. But we have to do secondary prevention if a person develops hypertension. We need to identify, we need to diagnose. Only diagnose it by screening, monitoring of blood pressure. Blood pressure of high risk person should be monitored regularly. There should be tracing of blood pressure. If it rises, we should start treatment. And what is prompt treatment? Several drugs are available to treat blood pressure. They are AC inhibitors. They are beta blockers. Here are calcium channel blockers. 
Diuretics are also available. We can give single drug, we can do combination of drugs. These medications are used to treat hypertension. Plus, we need to do primary prevention with secondary prevention. We need to modify lifestyle. If a person is diagnosed with hypertension, that's fine, but we need to treat, we need to prevent. Both measures, primary prevention and secondary prevention should run parallel. Lifestyle modification is important. Salt reduction is important. Healthy life is important. Healthy diet is important. Tertiary prevention. Hypertension is a long-standing disease. It can cause disability. So we have to limit disability. Like it can cause stroke. So we need to manage stroke. Plus, it should be rehabilitation. Which kind of rehabilitation? Social, vocational, physical, psychological. A person is ill for, from several years, he is taking medication, he is going to hospital on a regular basis, there are psychological problems. He should be counseled, he should be treated, he should be guided. Iceberg phenomena, we can apply iceberg phenomena on hypertension. There are unidentified cases, there are undiagnosed cases. Spectrum of hypertension in community differs from spectrum of hypertension in hospital. This is spectrum in hospitals. Only 10% cases report to hospitals and 90% cases are present in community. They don't report because there are no symptoms. There is lack of awareness, there is lack of education. So we need screening. We need tracing of blood pressure. We can trace blood pressure in the community by screening measures. We can identify high risk persons. Then we need to apply screening measures on them. That's how we can reduce the burden of hypertension. Because it can lead to slow epidemic. Burden will increase suddenly. There will be burden on hospitals. People report to hospital with complication. They may die due to complication. There may be end organ failure. So we need to monitor blood pressure. We need to identify hypertensives. What is the rule of half? It's a common university question. Population of the world is divided into half. Let's suppose this is total population. We suppose half population is hypertensive. And half of the population is normotensive. Those who are hypertensive, half are diagnosed, half remain undiagnosed. We need to target them. Half those who are diagnosed, half get treatment. This is the problem. People are diagnosed, but they are not getting the treatment. And half remain untreated. The problem with, with hypertension is that half who are treated half develop complications like stroke, cardiac failure. Half don't develop complications. Half who develop complications, half die and half will survive. So we can say that burden is increasing with day by day. There is epidemiological transition from communicable disease to non-communicable disease. There is health system has improved. We are managed to treat and prevent non-communicable -communic diseases. But on the other hand, lifestyle has changed. Physical activity has decreased. Burden of hypertension is increasing. There is stressful lifestyle. We need to cope with it. We need to identify like half those who are not diagnosed should be diagnosed by screening. Half who are diagnosed should be treated. No one should remain untreated. And we should stop complications. Now, we will discuss obesity. Obesity increase in weight. We found obese people around us, their BMI is greater than 30. Normal BMI is 18 to 25. That is normal. But if BMI increases from 30, there is obesity. Weight is increasing. Female have more tendency of, to become obese. There is abnormal growth of adipose tissue. And there is increase in body weight, body mass. What are risk factors are developing obesity? Lifestyle. Lifestyle is a bigger problem. Dentary lifestyle. People don't do work. They don't move. They don't do physical activity. This is increasing the risk of developing obesity. Dietary habits. Dietary habits play an important role in developing obesity. Like there is greater tendency to eat fast food. Living standards are improved. Few people are using fast food. Lifestyle high has modified plus drugs. People who are using amphetamine, 
there is tendency to become obese there is family history so these are the risk factors of developing obesity we need to control them how we can control them we need to control root cause or we need to control causes so root causes should be treated causes should be identified we should identify those who are obese or those who have tendency to become obese bmi should be monitored regularly if it is greater than 25 person has tendency to become obese we have to control the weight these strategies are adopted dietary strategy we have to control diet how balanced diet is important increase intake of fiber homemade food intake of fruits intake of vitamins minerals we should reduce the intake of fats and physical activity walk we can do walk there should be running regular exercise is mandatory health education we need to educate the masses mass education media can play an important role in mass education there should be ads on tv regarding running running regarding physical activity regarding diet you should run you should walk you should do physical activity to reduce obesity obesity can lead to hypertension it can lead to diabetes it can lead to disability weight should be monitored weight should be controlled weight should be traced bmi should be checked on regular basis children should be encouraged to adopt healthy lifestyle alcoholism should be stopped fast food should be reduced one can take but not on regular basis we should encourage people to take homemade food encourage people to take green leafy vegetables we need to encourage people to take fruits to take fluids cancer is an emerging problem nowadays it's a fatal disease it causes mortality survival rate is less in certain cancers nowadays due to industrialization due to increased population growth due to viral infections incidence of cancer is rising in both developing and developed world it's a fearful disease it is characterized by abnormal and uncontrolled growth of cells ability to in invade because these cells invade surrounding tissues they invade surrounding organs eventually they can cause death liver cancer is common in pakistan cervical cancer breast cancer most of the cancers are diagnosed at later stages at stage 3 or stage 4 they are hard to treat them so we need to screen them there are several agent factors like physical agents heat is playing an important role ionizing radiation solar radiation friction there are mechanical factors there are chemical factors asbestos dye benzol dye coal tar they are playing a role in increasing burden of cancer there are biological factors hepatitis b virus causes liver cancer there is cytomegalovirus epstein barr virus human papilloma virus t cell lymphoma virus aspergillus herpes virus these viruses are carcinogenic there is a important university questions that which viruses are carcinogenic your, your answer should be hepatitis b virus cytomegalovirus epstein b virus human papilloma virus like human human papilloma virus causes cervical cancer there is herpes virus diet nutrition is also playing an important role in increasing the burden of cancer smoke fish people are using smoke fish nowadays beef high intake of fat alcohol it causes liver cancer it causes esophageal cancer there are socio environmental factors use of tobacco lung cancer is common nowadays our use of estrogen drugs unlike may cause cancer what are various host factors in developing countries cancers are common in younger people like leukemia and lymphoma both men or women are vulnerable to develop cancer occupation plays an important role coal tar pitch dyes ultraviolet radiation people who are working in industry who are working in asbestos industry can develop cancer our habits like smoking people are using smoke smoking people are smoking they are using alcohol they are using excessive sunbath they play important role low fiber diet this is a current problem excessive sex with multiple sexual partners is playing an important role in development of cervical cancer 
there are environmental factors, nowadays there is industrialization, increased use of vehicles, there is air pollution, ozone depletion, they are also playing an important role. Prevention is important, we can do prevention by health promotion. What are danger signs of cancer? A lump in the breast. If a female has developed a lump in breast, this is danger signs of cancer. Non-healing ulcer. There is sudden change. A water mole. Indigestion. There is difficulty in swallowing. Voice change. There is hoarseness of voice. There is bleeding. There is change in weight, bowel habit, weight reduction, loss of appetite, lump, non-healing ulcer, scar, hoarseness of voice. If someone develops these symptoms, he or she must consult the doctor. People should be educated. They should avoid alcohol. They are modifiable risk factor. Alcohol, smoking, pan is used in India and Pakistan. They are modifiable risk factor. People should stop them. They should be increased use of grains and fruits and vegetables. Artificial food should not be used. Fast food should be reduced. Natural food should be used. Personal hygiene should be maintained. Especially in industrial workers, people who are working in industry, they should use gadgets, they should use personal protective measures. Personal hygiene should be maintained by female. It can stop cervical cancer. Socioeconomic status plays also, also plays an important role. Air pollution should be controlled. There should be legislation. There should be dilution of air. Oral hygiene should be maintained. Teeth alignment should be maintained. There is legislation. Legislation is mandatory to, con to control alcohol consumption, tobacco consumption, food-related carcinogens, and high-risk industrial workers should be monitored, surveillance should be done, annual examination, periodic medical examination should be done in industrial workers. There should be a focus or emphasis on occupational health. We, need, we can control this if we can reduce the risk factor. Risk factor can be minimized, disease can be minimized, burden can be reduced. This specific protection. Carcinogens should be avoided. We can do immunization against hepatitis B to prevent liver cancer. That is mandatory for everyone. Everyone sh should be immunized against hepatitis B. Vaccination is included in EPI schedule nowadays. Treatment of precancerous lesion. Lesions should be treated. There should be early diagnosis. Risk industrial workers. There should be protective clothing, protective measures. What is cancer prevention? Early diagnosis and treatment. How early diagnosis? By history, if someone has family history, if someone has history of pain, consistent or persistent pain, persistent cough, there is a lump, they should be screened, they should be diagnosed, like cytology detects CO cervix, or CO cervix can be detected by pap smear. This is screening and diagnostic test, x-ray, in case of cancer, endoscopic examination, breast examination, mammography detects CA breast, a CA breast and CA cervix and CA lungs are emerging public health problems in Pakistan. People who are smokers, they should be screened regularly. Female who have breast, uh, lump in breast, who have positive family history, they should be screened. Hygiene should be improved to avoid cervical cancer. Because uh, cervical cancer is common in female of low socioeconomic status. It is common in female who have multiple sexual partners. Treatment. We can do surgery. Surgery of breast. Chemotherapy can be done. Radiotherapy can be done. Immunotherapy can be done. But treatment is difficult and prevention is easy in case of cancer. We can increase the lifespan of patient if cancer is diagnosed at early stages. Prognosis is good if cancer is diagnosed at stage 1. It is poor if cancer is diagnosed at stage 4. Most of the times, cancers are diagnosed at later stages. When there are complications, cancers metastasize and lifespan reduces. People die. There is increase in mortality. We need to target population. We need to adopt control measures. We need to educate our people. Health education has an important role. We need to educate them regarding hygiene regarding breast examination, regarding tobacco use, regarding alcohol use, they are lethal, they are increasing the burden of disease. Tertiary prevention, cancer can cause disability. Person may become disabled, he may become bedridden. We need to rehabilitate them. There should be training. 
sometimes in case of CA liver, if we perform liver transplant surgery, liver is transplant, kidney is transplant, so we need to change their job, give them a suitable job, give them an easy job. There should be psychological rehabilitation. A person suffers from agony, suffers from stress due to cancer. His family suffers. Even family should be given psychotherapy. These are important measures to reduce cancer. Now, we will discuss another emerging health problem, diabetes. Diabetes is a metabolic disease. It is characterized by polyuria, polyphagia, there is polydipsia, hyperglycemia, blood sugar levels increase. Why they increase? There is deficiency of insulin that controls the metabolism of carbohydrates, proteins and fats and electrolytes. Diabetes develops. It can be classified. There is primary diabetes. There is secondary diabetes mellitus. Primary has two main types. Type 1, which is insulin dependent. It is common in younger people. Type 2, it is non-insulin dependent. There are oral hypoglycemic drugs. There is secondary diabetes due to pancreatic pathology. CA pancreas, lesion in pancreas, use of oral contraceptives. Liver disease can also contribute in development of diabetes. What are agent factors? What are various factors which causes uh, diabetes? Agent factors, insulin. Either there is decreased production of insulin or decreased sensitivity to insulin. This is major factor which causes diabetes. What are those factors? Age. Type 1 is common in young adults, especially in males. Type 2 is common in middle age, female. It is common in female, although it is present in male. So, age and gender plays an important role. There is family history. Especially maternal family history. Obesity and lead develop diabetes. What are environmental factors? Environment living condition, dietary factors, excessive use of glucose, excessive use of alcohol. They are contributory factors in development of cancer. In development of sorry, in development of diabetes. Dietary habits should be checked. Excessive alcohol should be banned, it should be monitored, people should be educated. We can prevent diabetes by adopting population strategy and high risk strategy. What is population strategy? We can target masses, health education. We can educate people regarding symptoms of diabetes, regarding weight, regarding dietary habits, regarding physical activity. Physical activity can reduce sugar levels. What is high-risk strategy? People who are vulnerable, like those whose family history is positive, we should target them. People who are obese, we should target them. We should educate them regarding healthy lifestyle, regarding healthy life measures, regarding balanced diet. We can reduce the incidence and prevalence of diabetes. What is secondary prevention? We need to diagnose diabetes as early as possible. Why we need to diagnose? Cause Diabetes can lead to various complications. How it is diagnosed? By monitoring blood sugar level, by glucose tolerance test, by HbA1c test, we can diagnose sugar. Then we need treatment to prevent complications. Like there are oral hypoglycemic drugs and there is insulin. Oral hypoglycemic drugs are given in type 2 and insulin usually given in type 1. But if there is uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, we can give insulin to type 2 diabetes mellitus patients. Treatment is mandatory. Monitoring of treatment is mandatory. Or there is reduced compliance. People don't take the drugs regularly. Tertiary prevention. There is disability. We need to limit disability. Diabetes can lead to various complications like diabetic foot, cardiovascular diseases, kidney problems, eye problems. We should limit them. If there is diabetic foot or gangrene, we need amputation. Then we need rehabilitation. If a person has undergone below knee amputation, we need prosthetics. We need psychological rehabilitation. We need vocational rehabilitation. We need physical rehabilitation. It's mandatory. All diabetes can lead to various complications which are fatal, which can cause death. There is miserable life of diabetic patient if he develops complications. 
we need to stop complication we can stop diabetes at various levels we can stop it from development if someone has developed diabetes we need to diagnose we need to treat if someone has developed complications we need to limit these complications we can do disability limitation and rehabilitation so all these levels of prevention can be applied simultaneously to reduce the burden of diabetes to re reduce the complications of diabetes to reduce the mortality due to diabetes it's a common problem in developing and developed world what is self care in diabetes mellitus personal hygiene feet hygiene is very important person should look for changes in color temperature swelling is always a footwear he should always wear footwear cause there are low sensation a lack of sensations sensation reduce in diabetics so they should be regular monitoring regular check up feet should be neat clean dry and warm she should change the socks regularly she should avoid smoking spirit and steroids steroids can increase blood sugar level she should exercise regularly especially 20 to 30 minutes brisk walk walk for 5 days a week it should be mandatory it's important in reducing blood glucose levels diet balanced diet diet which contains less glucose he should avoid juices he should avoid sugar and he or she should take the drug regularly oral hypoglycemic or insulin there should be regular intake of drugs to maintain blood sugar levels to avoid complications nowadays accidents are common there are domestic accidents there are accidents on road there are a lot of reasons which contribute in increasing mortality and morbidity due to accidents people die on the spot people become disabled accident is an event no one wants an accident but it it is independent of human will power it is caused by a rapidly acting force which results in physical damage plus with or without mental damage there is physical damage there is trauma and death can occur within a week if death occurs within a week accident is called fatal accident if death occurs after a week but within a month accident is called or it is said that person is killed due to accident if death occurs after one year it is called sequel of accidents so death can occur on the spot death can occur after a week death can occur after a year it leads to disability what are various measurements it is mortality indicator proportional mortality rates number of deaths due to accidents divided by total deaths it is morbidity indicator how many people are getting severe injuries how many people are getting injuries injuries can be minor injuries can be severe disability it causes disability loss of limbs and what is duration of disability what are various types of accidents most common road traffic accidents death due to motor vehicle accidents are common in pakistan other factors poor maintenance of vehicles there is no check and balance system large number of vehicles low driving standard drink and drive people usually drink and drive railway accidents there are train accidents train accidents are common due to lack of maintenance there are terrorism there is droning there is poisoning there are also accident burning burning in industries is also an accident industrial accidents are common and violence domestic violence wars are common they are leading to accidents plus nowadays use of mobile phone during driving they are contributing towards accidents they are increasing the incidence of accidents they are increasing the incidence of disability what are various risk factors of accidents infrastructure there are poor roads over speeding people don't follow speeding limits lack of traffic signals traffic sig traffic signals are not present on every road lack of education people use alcohol and drive press can also cause accidents so we can say that we should improve infrastructure in pakistan lack of infrastructure is playing an important role in accidents and there is lack of legislation 
or we can say that legislation is present but it is not implemented speed limits are not implemented how we can prevent the accidents we can reduce the burden of incidents by improving infrastructure roads should be improved there should be legislation like seat belts use of helmets signals traffic signals speed limits fines should be imposed there should be strict monitoring strict surveillance on those who are violating traffic rules what west have done they have improved legislation they have improved infrastructure seat belts are mandatory elements are mandatory there are traffic signals there are speed limits and they are imposing heavy fines but in our country situation is quite different we have poor infrastructure we have poor legislation we have poor implementation i will study sure that while using seat belts or use of helmets during driving they reduce the severity of injury severity of injury is reduced by this legislation if there is speed limit we can reduce accidents we can ban alcohol during driving mobile phone should also be banned as people are using mobile attention diverts and it causes accidents so these measures should be taken to avoid accidents if we avoid accidents we can avoid injuries we can avoid disabilities plus domestic violence can also be controlled infrastructure train infrastructure should be improved we can stop the extent of injury or we can say that disability should be reduced injuries can be minor if we follow these injuries can be major injuries can be severe if we don't follow the guidelines people should be educated so ed health education is mandatory everyone should be educated regarding traffic signals regarding use of seat belts regarding speed limits regarding fine regarding use of alcohol during driving so education has a mandatory or important role education in their own language media can be used social media can be used mass media can be used tv can be used there should be ads there should be programs on tv regarding accidents regarding risk of accidents regarding prevention of accidents government should improve the infrastructure there should be emphasis lives are very important lives are precious people are losing their loved loved one due to accidents now we will discuss another important condition another emerging problem that is blindness nowadays incidence of blindness is increasing in pakistan there are four levels of visual function there is normal vision there can be moderate impairment there is severe visual impairment will leads to blindness or we can say that moderate impairment leads to severe impairment if remains untreated and severe impairment can lead to blindness if it is not managed properly we need to manage the cases properly what is normal vision according to snell chart if someone normal vision is 20 by 20 someone that subject sees the same line letters at 20 feet or 9 meters there is normal vision 20 feet or 9 meters if someone is reading the letters properly from 20 feet or from distance of 9 meters vision is normal visual impairment we can define visual impairment as limitations of actions and functions our visual system actions function they are limited national eye institute defines low vision as visual impairment not correctable by standard glasses glasses can improve vision but if it is not improved by glasses this is visual impairment or low vision contact lens medication or surgery that interferes with the ability to perform activities of daily living if there is visual impairment someone can't perform daily activities and there is problem in seeing there is problem in reading there is problem in watching tv who defines visual acuity less than 3 per 60 or its equivalent this is blindness inability of person to count finger from a distance of 6 meters or 20 feet if a person is unable to count finger from this distance he or she is blind vision 6 60 or less than that this is blindness what is visual activity Darkness of vision, measured as maximum distance a person can see a certain object. Some person can see object from twenty meters. Some can't see object from twenty meters. What are risk factors? 
we can start from vitamin A deficiency. It can lead to blindness. Cataract. It remains untreated. It can cause blindness. Glaucoma. Trachoma. Trauma. They all are risk factors of developing blindness. How we can control blindness? There are certain control and preventive measures which are available to treat blindness or to control blindness. There is primary care, there is secondary care and there is tertiary care. What is primary care? Health care workers are trained. Trained health care workers are required. Trained health care workers to educate people regarding blindness or to monitor their eye are to monitor their vision. Vitamin A drops are provided to children. They can provide education regarding dietary intake. Diet which contains vitamin A like carrots. So their basic duty is to educate people, is to refer people, is to see their vision. So first we need to train healthcare workers, then they should train common people. Like diet is very important. Vitamin A intake is very important nowadays. Vitamin A drops and capsules are provided to school going children in Pakistan. There are massive campaigns to reduce the incidence of blindness. What is secondary care in case of cataract, glaucoma, trauma? A person is referred to district health quarter or tehsil headquarters where there is eye department, special eye department. They diagnose and they treat. They treat cataract surgery, they treat trachoma, they treat glaucoma, they treat eye defects, they provide special health care. So, person is referred from primary center to secondary center to eye department, eye specialist see the patient, they treat the patient, they do surgery. So, surgeries are performed in secondary care. And what is tertiary care? They need special attention, like in teaching setup. Retinal detachment surgeries are performed. They need special care, special attention, highly qualified eye department. So tertiary care is provided at tertiary healthcare level in teaching hospitals. Retinal detachment surgeries are performed. Specific, there are certain programs, there are specific programs to control blindness. There is trachoma control program, school eye health services, screening and treatment. Nowadays, it, has, it is seen that vision of school children is deteriorating. So there are screening programs, there are treatment programs, spectacles are provided, vision is corrected. Health education of both children and parents. Vitamin A prophylaxis programs. Patients eye health issues, people who are working in welding industries, they can use glasses. There, there should be regular checkups. So monitoring, surveillance, regular checkups. They are the current programs to reduce the incidence of blindness in Pakistan. It is an important way to control non-communicable diseases. There is focus on reducing risk factors. So in the end, we can say that reduce the incidence or to reduce the burden of non-communicable diseases. Risk factors should be minimized. We need to control risk factors. We can control modifiable risk factors of cardiac diseases, of hypertension, of obesity, of diabetes, of blindness, of accidents. Like smoking can be modified. Alcohol can be modified. Diet can be modified. We can diagnose and treat hypertension. We can diagnose and treat diabetes. We can reduce their incidence. We can reduce the alcohol intake. We should emphasize on health education on physical activity, on balanced diet, cause the burden of non-communicable disease is increasing day by day. We need to control this iceberg. We need to control this burden. Cause we have a fragile health system. We have fewer funds for treatment. So if we do preventive measures, we can control the burden of disease easily, especially in case of cancers and cardiac diseases. If we diagnose cancer at earlier stages, there are lesser expenses. We need to see cost effectiveness. We need to see prognosis. So screening measures, research measures, surveillance measures are essential to control non-communicable diseases. And best way is to minimize their risk factor, minimize their modifiable risk factor. Best way is to adopt healthy lifestyle. We need to modify our lifestyle. 
with evolution there is a problem with industrialization living standard of people has improved they are using fast food there is lack of physical activity stress is increasing world has become so fast that everyone has stress we need to manage this stress we need to control this stress to control non communicable diseases we need to minimize the risk factor of cancers we can minimize viral infection we can immunize we can reduce environmental factors we can reduce agent we can apply all these our susceptible host and best best measure is high risk strategy it is tough mass screening is tough we can do high risk screening high risk people who are vulnerable who have positive family history who has risk factors who are working in industries which can cause cancer they should be targeted they should be screened they should be identified they should be diagnosed in order to stop this iceberg of disease cause this cause is slow epidemic all of sudden burden of hypertension burden of cancer burden of diabetes burden of obesity is rising in pakistan because these diseases have longer latent period we have not identified them there are lack of screening measures there are lack of health facilities we have not identified them at earlier stages so all of sudden it is increasing mortality is increasing morbidity morbidity is increasing there is disability there is burden on health system so we need to change our policy we need to provide health education to our community we need to stop this iceberg we need identification we need surveillance measures in fact we need research measures we need to change our plans policies should be remodeled we need new policies there should be emphasis on prevention definitely we need treatment in certain cases there is gap between prevention and treatment people who report to hospital they are treated but there is lesser compliance regular follow up there is no regular follow up we need to bridge these gaps we need to bridge these loopholes we need to bridge prevention and treatment we need to bridge regular and irregular treatment we need to bridge tertiary prevention with secondary prevention with primary prevention they are not separate we need to bridge them when that's how we can control the burden we can limit the burden otherwise people will become disabled burden will keep on increasing keep on increasing we need these measures to stop this burden cause the epidemiological transition as we have seen in hypertension people are getting hypertension in obesity obesity is itself a risk factor of development of hypertension and diabetes female have greater tendency to become obese we need to stop this primordial prevention is essential we can encourage people from the start we can encourage children to adopt healthy lifestyle school education can play an important role health education should be included in school media can play an important role media should be involved there is mul- if they have multi factorial causation multiple factors should be applied multiple preventive measures should be applied they should be bridged there should be balance between diet intake and physical activity so basic thing is counseling education surveillance and research that's all